What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's the Earth Master here on the live stream uh, on this Thursday, July 21st, uh, 2022 date. It's about 9.34 p.m. Yeah, a little bit past my bedtime, but that's okay. Decided to get an update in here real quick. Uh, earthquake activity shows a 1.7 up here in the region of Alaska. Let's go ahead and check out some space weather activity first. We do have a G2 storm kicking up here. Potentially around the July 23rd time frame, we are looking at some elevated conditions here with the KP index ramping up around the five level. Dropping off here over the past few hours, but we are expecting that to ramp back up here. Uh, and of course these higher elevated KP index levels uh, will lead to potentially some um, auroras up here at the higher latitudes, also possibly up here into the Northern tier states. <clears throat> now we are predicting uh, at least this site is forecasting a g2 class storm uh, g2 we hear a lot about g1 right well g2 class storms here's potential issues that uh, could arise from uh, such storms power systems high latitude power systems may experience uh, voltage alarms and such long duration storms may cause transformer damage uh, spacecraft uh, space craft operations uh corrective actions to orientation may be required by ground control uh, other systems hf radio uh, pro propagation can fade at higher latitudes and auroras has been seen as low as new york and idaho tip typically around the 55 degree uh, geomagnetic latitude there that's for a g2 g3 i don't think that's in the forecast but things tend to uh um possibly get up that high um kp index around the seven range uh looks like they're 200 per solar cycle uh 130 days per cycle uh when, when storms like this kick up uh voltage corrections may be required false alarms triggered on some protection devices and of course uh, spacecraft operations up there have um, obviously some more issues uh intermittent satellite navigation and low frequency radio navigation problems may occur HF radio may be intermittent and auroras has been been seen as low as Illinois and Oregon typically the 50 degree geomagnetic latitude and of course it can go up G4 G5 I don't think that's coming in the forecast here but uh, never know could it could possibly happen with the uh, uh, advancement towards the solar maximum here in a couple years <coughs> excuse me all right, so 80% chance here on the July 23rd time frame of seeing those auroras. Mid-latitudes have a 35% chance uh, there for seeing that uh, activity ramp up. Right now, current wind or current solar activity looks, uh, looks like it's dropped off a little bit here. Notice the uh, dramatic drop in density. Uh, but I expect that to kick back up a little bit here. Speed's still pretty elevated around the 400, 450 range. We're expecting some of that solar wind stream to pop up to around the 800 range, KM, uh, KM range. So that's, uh, that's quite, uh, quite the windy conditions. I shouldn't say windy like that because it's not really wind such as we know it, but uh, solar wind. Uh, looking at the solar flare possibilities, those are not of concern currently. Um, looks like just a very minimal chance of any type of flaring. Uh, sea flare, yes, around 70% chance. Looking at the X-ray detection chart here, shows a decline though. Notice that we're starting to slip underneath that sea uh, flare threshold, the flux uh, data here. It's been pretty consistent and active above that level for a couple days, but now we're dropping lower and lower uh, due to the continual decay of the sunspots. Uh, 3059 looks like it may be trying to uh, give off a little bit, uh, but there's not too much activity here that would point towards a, a, uh, a much larger flare. 3062 doesn't even have that potential. And then around the bend here, things are looking pretty quiet along the eastern limb there's that massive um, coronal hole that was facing us over the past few days going to be providing us with uh, quite a bit of amplified storming as noted here in the uh, three-day geomagnetic forecast so we'll keep an eye on that pretty closely see what kicks up 
Uh, here's a little article put out by these folks here. Faint full uh, halo coronal mass ejection, the CME. Observed early Thursday following an eruption near center disk has been modeled. Uh, forecast is calling for a passage past Earth by late on the day on Friday and into Saturday morning. The solar wind speed is predicted to be quite high, near 800. Uh, that's, like I mentioned, pretty high there. And this could jolt our geomagnetic field to the tune, beautiful tune, of at least a minor G1 to a moderate G2 storm uh, conditions at the higher latitude. So we'll watch it and, of course, provide updates here um, as needed. Uh, I think what I'm going to do here on the, well, I'm going to make a couple adjustments on the live stream, switch up the data right now because things are looking kind of minimal for solar flares. So we'll watch the uh, Aurora forecast. All right, moving on. <clears throat> what do we got here? Let's go ahead and check out the latest map here from the USGS. Getting some activity down here in the southern portions here. It looks like a 5.1 in the South Sandwich Islands area. It's been relatively quiet here within this region. A little bit of movement uh, off the coast of Chile from this morning as well. Notice some activity down here along this plate boundary, the Antarctica region, Australia, and the Pacific plate boundary. In the Balany Islands, a 4.9. It's been uh, pretty quiet there. So regions of uptick, have we seen it? It's kind of been a little spotty and just spread out as a whole in terms of earthquake activity recently. Uh, the most recent quake shows a 5.2 in the Japan area down into the Japan Trench at 86.6 kilometers. Uh, of course, that will add further strain and stress up here on the Kurokamchaka Trench and the Japan Trench itself. A lot of times the deeper earthquake movements here trigger uh, more surface quakes um, soon after these deep quakes. So we'll watch that uh, region closely. Some activity through the Indonesia area and also the Java Trench, but uh, no major uptick that I can see here. On the map, down here in the Vanuatu area, some older earthquake activity, include the 4.9 in the Kermadec Islands area. Those two earthquakes, though, uh, from late last night, early this morning time frame. Uh, not a whole lot going on in South America or the Puerto Rico area. Let's go ahead and pull up the all magnitudes. See what we got uh, for Puerto Rico. We're talking about, wow, 10 earthquakes. Not that big of a deal at all uh, for that region. Texas, though, getting in on some activity. Of course, they had that 4.7 earthquake uh, earlier this morning time frame. Followed up, uh, looks like, by a couple aftershocks in the upper two range. Over here along the west coast, Ridgecrest area is lighting up like crazy. Uh, they did have some, uh, what was that, 3.1 near the Elancha area and a 2.7 within this region as well. If we bring up the all magnitudes, this area is swarming pretty good around the Coso Volcanic Range out here. Getting a little bit of swarming at the depth, le depth levels of about, uh, looks like 6 to 7 kilometers or so. There's a couple of them down there, around 8 this area has seen some swarming in the past and uh, of course some activity along the fracture zones here of the 2019 earthquakes back on July 4th and July July 5th for the Ridgecrest region. Uh, aftershock activity continuing there for many years, I'm sure. Uh, let's see what we got. Some movement earthquake here around the Garlock Fault zone, but uh, overall not a whole lot of activity on the Shear Fault. Uh, some movement down south, although if you notice here, things are... <coughs> kind of tapering off a little bit along the San Jacinto fault zone. That's going to be this lengthy fault system here. Um, Elsinore fault system, very quiet. Not a whole lot going on there. Uh, but most of the activity confined north of the Garlock fault zone. And we see that quite a bit. seems like when things are active down south here, uh, they're a little bit less active up north of this Garlock zone. So... Um, Kind of active up here uh, throughout the eastern portion of Sierra Nevada, including some activity around Long Valley Super Volcano. No major movement, just uh, quite a few microquakes out there today. And also around the Eureka area um, of Nevada, seeing some activity. Noticing a little earthquake activity out here along the uh, Makama Fault Zone. 
And up here along the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, we'll pull this up here, looking at a, a few earthquakes. Got to see uh, the list here because they're kind of hiding out there. A couple twos and a couple ones down there at around 12 to 18 kilometers deep. That is associated with the Cascadia mega thrust area and that's consistent with uh, subduction zone earthquakes. Uh, so a little activity kicking up there in Northern California today. Let me check out the trimmer map and see what we got going on here. Nothing showing up here for the trimmer map. That's kind of odd. No trimmers down dip. Uh, yesterday's, let me check out yesterday's map here. We did have some movement, uh, some trimmer activity underneath the U uh, Eugene, Oregon area. Down dip. But uh, that was about it. So... Not a whole lot going on for earthquake or uh, tremor activity down dip. One earthquake out here in the... Oh, I know this one. I think we all know what this one is. That is the... Um, um, not Crater Lake. Newberry Crater. Why was I confused with that for a second? I know where Crater Lake is. I just I had a little brain issue there for a second. But a uh, little earthquake activity and negative... Um, in the Newberry Crater, Newberry Volcano. So let's go ahead and check out the seismograph stations up here at that specific volcano there in Oregon and see what we got. There's that one earthquake showing up on the map. Uh, we'll see if this seismograph station works here. Three component uh, broadband station. <clears throat> and wow, yeah, this actually looks pretty decent for tunage. Um, some very, very small earthquake activity there. Uh, can't really see exactly what's going on up there. Let me check the previous day. Uh, I know these are some S waves from a distant earthquake yesterday. Uh, and possibly, I don't know, I can't really see. There's not a whole lot of earthquake activity out there. But this could be some interference around the region. Doesn't look harmonic, doesn't look like volcanic. Just looks like some uh, outside interference. As far as earthquake activity goes at this specific volcano, there's definitely not a lot. Uh, hence the uh, the one little quake being reported. All right, uh, moving up to the north, Pacific Northwest. Love the weather up there, but uh, not a big fan of this area. Just a little on the crazy side around Seattle area. Mount St. Helens seen some movement, some microquakes out there. Uh, today and some activity as noted on this morning's update around the Seattle fault would not want to be up here when this thing goes either uh, Just a very dangerous region. It's beautiful and the weather is nicer up there, but I don't know uh, Not uh, not a big fan of being in a major major damage or hazard zone up there uh, Let's see what else we got uh, yeah, not a whole lot going on throughout the rest of the country here. Alaska, about the same. Uh, looking a little on the shy side for some magnitudes up here. Only a few microquakes throughout the region and a little cluster of quakes out here uh, in this area of the Aleutian Trench. A couple earthquakes around the subduction zone there. Uh, one earthquake right now just coming into the South America area, it looks like a 4.4. This one pretty deep, 184 kilometers showing up here on the USGS map. Um, like I said, it's been a it's been a little while since we've seen uh, a lot of earthquake activity out here. This is over the last week of all magnitudes. Uh, yes, we had some, but it's been very very spotty. Uh, but that may be uh, may be changing now. We'll, we'll have to keep an eye on that for the South America region. Uh, let's check out the Yellowstone area real quick. See what we got. Um, do, 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 do. I I don't see a whole lot. There's a whole lot of graphs, but there's a whole lot of nothingness in those graphs. It looks like, upon closer inspection here, a little bit. I mean, I'm talking just a little bit of small, very small microquake activity here. As noted on those thin red spikes. Uh, those little earthquakes did show up over here around Purple Mountain as well, but not as intense, indicating their weakness in the magnitude department. Uh, earthquakes Canada, we'll go ahead and check these guys out here real quick. A lot of folks want to know what's going on up here along the coast of uh, the BC region. Sometimes it's active, sometimes it's not. And uh, today it looks like one of the days that it's not. 1.4 inland near the uh, 
Pemberton area, BC. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Just a little 1.4 or 39 kilometers down there. Uh, aside from that, the majority of this earthquake activity here that you see is a much, much older. I'm talking weeks old. Uh, maybe a little couple of small microquakes up here into the, uh, it looks like just outside the White Horse region and into portions of uh, kind of extending over into Alaska a little bit. But uh, not a whole lot going on up there along the western coast. Eastern coast about the same. Did have some movement up here uh, quite a few days ago off the coast of the Barrington region. Uh, 3.1. Aside from that, looks kind of uh, on the quiet side up there, folks. All right. Uh, so don't forget, we do have... Uh, we have that solar activity to watch pretty closely. Uh, a G2 storm is, uh, I mean, it's kind of up there. KP index around the 6 range. We'll see how this, uh, see how this ramps up. It may miss us. I don't know. A lot of times these uh, forecasting events for these uh, CMEs and coronal holes take a, take a wild turn and uh, completely miss us but uh, I don't know we'll, we'll watch this one pretty closely see what it does hey at least it's, it's a little bit of hope when it comes to terms of um, activity sunspot activity you can see here here on this image absolutely beautiful big old ball of fire look at that stuff Some beautiful images. I like to look at this site every once in a while. I'll include this in the link here of uh, this update video. But uh, Earth scale. Check out the Earth scale up here. That is crazy. Look at it. That's us right here on this little Earth. That is nuts. All right, guys. I'm going to jump off here. Have a good night, everyone. Um, Definitely stay safe out there, and we will chat you guys a little bit later, probably tomorrow sometime. Alrighty, that's about it. Peace out, everyone. Have a good night.